Welcome to this video about creating a column chart in Blazor. In this column chart, we are going to display this data set here. The type will be dictionary, key type, integer. Value type will be list, and the elements of this list will be tuples, the first item string, the second one decimal. You see here we only have two elements in the dictionary, first key 2017, and then here a list with 12 elements, all with the tuple, string representing the month, and the item two decimal representing the amount of sales. So let's right click here on our project, add a new item, and then select Razor Component. I call it Column Component. Now I will share the code for this tutorial so that you don't have to type out all the, the things of the data set. Now here I'm going to create one property that is marked with the parameter attribute. It will be exactly of the same type. Yeah, everything, um, <laughs> everything else wouldn't make any sense. Dictionary and then here the list. Tuple, string, decimal, and the name will be data. Now here we'll also have two fields. First one will represent the selected data so the user can click on the element selected and then also the selected year so that they can switch between the years. And then I will create a second property. This time it's only gettable. So uh, only read only and we, it won't be marked with the parameter attribute. Now the goal of this thing here is to retrieve the all the data sets from the current selected year. So I name it selected data. Now here the expression syntax. Here we are using linch. So we are filtering it data where the key of the data is selected year. And then the thing now is, what is going to be returned? Now, where is returning an I enumerable of a key value pair that in itself has another collection that is a list? And we want to flatten the whole thing out. And whenever you want to flatten something out, uh, you have to call select many. And here we are just saying s dot value, which will be you know, a list of the string decimal. And then here I have called to list. And just so I don't forget, I also override the initialized method. And in here, I'm setting selected year to the newest year. And I can do this by here again using link. So I'm finding the maximal key in our data set. And of course, the maximal key is the newest year. So now let's create the markup. Here, everything in this dark alert. Now the border will be dark. And if I remember correctly, border dark will mean black and alert dark will just mean uh, a dark background. So column A, so that it doesn't take the whole width. Now here, again, an alert, but this time primary. So this will be uh, a bit uh, like the head of the whole thing margin, bottom four, and then here margin, let's just say one, and then again, border dark. And then let's say, no, that's it. Now here, sales. Now here I'm going to create a select so that the user can select a desired year. Here again, I'm using bootstrap, so I'm form, Form control. Now I say margin left two, so that we have a bit of a spacing there. And then column three, so that not the whole width. Display inline, so that we no, don't have a new line from the element that is following us. And then, yeah, again, board dark, but it's not that important. Now, the important thing is that we make the binding to select the year, and then also not that important bind event on input so that the element doesn't need to lose focus so that the binding is updated. Now here I just for each enumerate over all the keys in data and then display it here 
as an option. And yeah, from now on the binding will will work. And then here I'm making a check if uh, the value, uh, if the tuple here has value, and I'm just going to say if the string is not null, I'm sure there are also other ways which you can check if a tuple has value and not just looking if one of the elements has a value, uh, but I, I can't remember them right now. So I just do it as such. Now here I'm saying, yeah, display inline. I'm not 100% sure if it's even needed. I don't think it's needed. You can also take it away. Margin left too, so that we have a bit of a spacing on the left. And then I'm saying sales in and then selected item one, so the year, and then here the selected. Ah, again, always typo. Uh, item two, so the sales, and then just the dollar sign because we are in America here. So, and then here we are going to actually create our, our component, like our chart and the left. Now let's just make, let's just start with the whole chart. So display flexbox. Now justify content, I will say between. So justify content is used to space the elements in a flexbox horizontally. And between means that the horizontal spacing is pushing them so that the space between them is maximized. And now align items, it is also used to space, like to, to distribute, distribute the spacing between the elements. But in this case, it's the vertical axis. I'm saying align items at the end so that everything is pushed towards the bottom. And uh, just say margin one. Now here I'm setting, I'm leaving the bubble of bootstrap and setting height to 300 pixel. So this is hard coded stuff. And here the, the, the explanation mark just so that we are sure that we are actually overriding bootstraps styling. Now here I'm going to create a legend, again flex, but this time I'm changing it to column reverse. So here it is a, it is a row and here it is actually a column and align cell start. And now here, it's maybe a bit abstract to get enumerable. I call the range method on it to generate items from one to 10. Now here we are going to create the, the legend that is going to stack up because here we have the flex column and just reverse that everything yeah, is reversed. Uh, now here, we are actually going to print out the value. So item multiplied with, and then I say select data max. So we are going to get the highest amount of sales in this year. And then we are going to divide this through 10. So that if, if the highest sales amount is 300,000, we have a legend starting with 30,000, 60,000, 90, 120, just counting up to these 300K. So I hope this makes sense. Otherwise, I think it will make sense if you see it in action. And then here we are actually going to display the elements. So select the data. Now, this diff will be quite loaded here. So I will start with the own click use a lambda syntax here. So here selected item will be assigned to selected if it is clicked. And then we start styling it. Now, again, it will be an alert. Again, it will be primary and also have border dark. Now, the thing is, we also want to display the month in this column. And therefore, I'm just using Flexbox again. Now, this time, again, it will be row and not a column because I don't specify uh, column explicitly. Justify content center so that it is centered. Now, the Flexbox will only consist of one item. And align items, that's the important one here, will be end so that it is pushed towards the end. And then 
somewhere I have used something with margin. I'm not sure. Maybe here I have to to set margin to zero so that it makes sense. So yeah, zero. And now here another very important part where we are going to calculate the ex the actual height of the column. So here we are using 300, which is the 300 pixels. And then here we multiply it, and we multiply it uh, with the relation of the current value divided again by the highest value. So in this thing, the, the whole the whole chart will only display as much value as the highest sales value is in this period. Now here I have to set pixels and with I set 45 pixels. So I've of course done it before, so it's not 100%. Uh, so that don't do it by heart. I know some pixels. Yeah, so just that you don't think. Uh, I'm a genius, which I'm not. So item and here item one, which will be the the month. And yeah, the whole display flex thing, we have just made this so that this element here is pushed vertically to the end of the of the chart. So I think we are uh, we are ready in, in the component. Now here I have to use a component, column component, and then here give it the data, data. So let's have a look. Now I've told you that I've done it before. I have uh, checked that on this size of the screen it will work and it will look and it will yeah look good. Okay, so we have a problem. Okay, so this is working. Here we have a bit of a problem, and okay, I also forgot to make a transition. So I think the problem can be solved here in one go because here I have to make some styling. So set style. Now the section which will be height 30 pixel because like the container is 300 pixel. Border top will be just three pixels solid black so that we have a bit of a separation. And then nah, font size. I don't think I have to set. And then here, yeah, just a transition. So transition property, 0.7 seconds, all and linear. Now let's have a look again. So let's have a look. Now here we are just a bit too wide to, to have an optimal styling. So do we have the transition? Yes, we have the transition. And here on the left hand side, we also have the, the legend. Now I click on the tune here and then I see sales in June 320,000. Now, um, apparently here we have to set display in line as well. And this is done. Where do we have it? The, oh, here in the header. So here display in line. So let's just assure ourselves that it works. So now, yeah, you, here you see June is not working in this case, uh, but in the other ones it is. I click June again, and here you see everything in line the 320,000. Sales month. Thank you very much for your attention.